I could persuade you to invest in one bit of kit, a piece of gear that will transform the way you create content, then an electronic turntable or Lazy Susan would be it. You know those super sexy spinning shots you see from the likes of Daniel Schiffer and Austin Paul? Well, you too can get results just as good with a small amount of money. I got mine a couple years back for 40 quid, and to me, that's a bargain. Along with the nifty 50mm lens, I would say this is the best bang for your buck bit of gear you can own. I use it all the time. If I want to improve the look of a product, any product, a beer can, drink, piece of gear, pet guinea pig, rest in peace guys, or even a smelly pair of trainers, then bring out the lazy Susan and start to get creative shots in an instant. And I'm talking instant results. Wide shots, close up details, overhead, down low. The Lazy Susan has you covered. Push the budget and get an electronic one which keeps rotating over and over. This way you can keep recording one smooth spin hands free, allowing you to focus on the camera instead and make sure it's one that rotates 360 degrees continuously. Otherwise, it will only do one rotation before spinning back the opposite way, and this would limit what can be created in post when you sped up the footage. Having a constant spin over and over will allow you to have multiple spins in one cool shot. Boom! You can get them in black or white, and both have their plus points. Using the white will add ambient light to the base of your product, or use the black for a negative fill. A lot of the time I use surfaces on top of the base, so the colour didn't matter so much to me, but certainly is worth keeping in mind for the look you want in the final video. Let's talk about the weight capacity. This little thing defies all logic. I've managed to use heavy backdrops along with large equipment on these, and it still spins. I'm not so sure about the 25kg limit, that seems a stretch too far, but so far so good for my needs. If you like what you see guys, then why not hit subscribe, plenty more videos like this on the channel. But for now, let's put this into practice. Okay, so let's set up a basic shot to demonstrate how easy it is to get good results. Place the Lazy Susan on a flat surface, at a height where you can set the tripod to be level with the base. This will be a nice starting point. Next, get a surface of your choice. I'm going to use glass for this example, as it hides the base at this low angle. Plus, gives a nice reflection on the surface. Place your chosen product in the middle of the glass and adjust the tripod to get the product within the frame. Now let's make a backdrop. Just prop anything up you can find that works. In this case, I'm using the sides of a collapsible ottoman. Position your main key light to one side and slightly in front of the product so the light starts to wrap around. But limit the amount of spill on the background as we will control that look with another light. Grab your small second light source and position that behind and to the opposite side of your product, making sure it isn't visible in frame. Angle it towards the background so in camera it has a glow behind the product. Consider adding a look to the shot by gelling this second light source. Let's go for a blue tin. Now hit record, 4K resolution if your camera allows, and let the product spin for several rotations. Import your footage into your editing software. I'm a Premiere Pro guy. And let's see what this one simple shot can become. Your biggest friend here is keyframes. Learn them. They allow you to change the scale and position between a time you choose. For example, let's create a simple punch-in shot. Place keyframes at the beginning of your clip and let's let it play for a few seconds. Now let's add another keyframe but this time, let's increase the scale to 130%. Play it back, and there you have the very basics of what a keyframe does. Just to reiterate, this is the basics. Why not do one more option of the same shot, but let's add in some other factors. Okay, let's raise the interest level by also adding in a rotation keyframe alongside the scale and position. Same as before, choose your starting point and add keyframes to all. For this example, I'm going to add a rotation at the beginning and let it rotate back around to the correct position whilst the scale increases. 
So let it play out for a few seconds and then let's add our ending keyframes on the scale, position and rotation. Play it back and there we have the same shot but with a load more interest. And to think, that's just the start of what can be done. Keyframes are a way of creating endless shots from one static original. Play with them, change the positions and duration, combine them with speed ramps and other techniques to get results that really transform your shots into something more. So here's to you, lazy Susan. Turns out, you're not so lazy after all. If you've made it this far into the video, why not check out either my making of a beer commercial or this playlist I've created, which will help you learn my techniques on gear, lighting and editing. As always, get your camera out and just have fun with it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next video.